I'd like to share another story by Max Licardo called You Are Mine. Punchinello lived in Wemmicksville. Just like all the other Wemmicks, he was made of wood and had been carved by Eli the Wemmick maker. Sometimes the Wemmicks did silly things, like the time they collected boxes and balls. Things started getting silly when a Wemmick named Tuck bought a new box. Others had boxes, but Tuck's was a new box. Tuck loved his new box. It was brightly coloured, and he was very proud of it. He strutted up and down the street, showing off his box. Have you seen my new box? He would ask the Wemmicks. Would you like to touch it? There he is. Tuck found Punchinello. Don't you wish you had a new box? He teased. Punchinello thought Tuck's box was beautiful and he wished for a box of his own. Soon Tuck began to think he was better than other Wemmicks because he had a new box. Nip disagreed. My box is as good as Tuck's, he said, showing off his box on the other side of the street. Tuck gave Nip a mad look. Then he had an idea. He stepped into a store and bought a ball. Now he had more things than Nip. A box and a ball. There he is with Punchinello. Nip frowned at Tuck's ball and then he bought two balls. He boasted to Tuck, I have found more than you. Before he knew it, Tuck was buying another box, then Nip bought another ball, then Tuck bought a ball, then Nip bought a box. Ball, box, ball, box, Tuck, Nip, Nip, Tuck. On and on it went. The mare tried to stop the whole mess. You two are being silly, he said to Nip and Tuck. Why, who cares who has the most toys? You're just jealous, they replied because you don't have any. Jealous of you? Ha! But soon the mare was in the store buying boxes and balls. There's Nip and Tuck with their boxes and balls. Other Wemmicks began to join in. The baker, the butcher, the doctor, the dentist, before long, everyone wanted to own the most balls and boxes. Some boxes were big, some were bright, some balls were heavy, some were light. Tall people carried them, small people carried them, everybody carried them, and everybody thought good Wemmicks have a lot, not so good Wemmicks have little. When a Wemmick walked down the street with a stack of balls and boxes higher than his head, the people stopped. Now, there goes a good Wemmick, they would say. But when a Wemmick passed with only one ball or box, the others would whisper, Poor, poor Wemmick. Of course, Punchinello didn't want to be called a poor Wemmick. He searched through his cupboard and found one little ball. He dug into his pocket and found enough money for one small box. I know what I'll do, he declared. I'll sell my books and get more money to buy more boxes and balls. So he bought a blue and green box with clouds painted on the sides but still he wanted more. He worked nights for extra money and bought a ball. And since he was working nights, he didn't need his bed. He sold it and bought two more balls. Soon Punchinello had an armful, but other Wemmicks had more. There's Punchinello with his books.
Some of them carried many boxes and balls. They had trouble walking. Punchinello wanted to be like these Wemmicks, so he sold more stuff and he worked more hours. His eyes were tired from not getting any sleep. His arms were tired from carrying toys. And worst of all, his friends couldn't remember when Punchinello last came to play. We haven't seen you lately, Lucia said. Why don't you come and play? asked Splint. Not everyone carried about boxes and balls. Punchinello's friends didn't. But Punchinello told his friends, I've got to work. His friends sighed, but Punchinello only carried, cared what the other box and ball people thought. So he got a new idea. I'll sell my house. And there he is with Splint and Lucia. That's crazy, cried Lucia. Where will you live? asked Splint. But all Punchinello could think about was the toys he could buy with all that money. So he sold his house. He bought boxes and boxes and balls and balls. He carried so many toys he couldn't see where he was going. His stack went way above his head. But he didn't mind. So what if his arms ached? So what if he kept walking into walls? So what if he had no friends? He had boxes and balls, and when he passed Wemmick, they would turn and say, Wow, he must be a good Wemmick. Punchinello felt great. I'm a good Wemmick, he thought. Does that look good? But then the mayor's wife changed the rules. She was very proud of her boxes and balls. She not only had a lot, but she also had special kinds. She bought them at the fanciest stores with funny names and left the names on the boxes so everyone could see them. She wanted to be the best, Wemmick. One day she had an idea. Not only will I have the most, but I will go higher. So she climbed on top of one of her boxes and shouted, Look at me, everybody! Immediately, all the box and ball people tried to outdo her. One climbed onto a fountain, another onto a balcony, and then another onto a roof. It was the mayor who spotted the mountain, however. There's the mayor's wife. Behind the village stood Wemmick's Peak. I'm going to the top of the mountain, the mayor shouted. The race was on. Wemmick's loaded with boxes and balls began running up the mountain. It was a crazy race. Since the people couldn't see where they were going, they bumped into each other. Exhausted, they fell over their own feet. Some fell off the trail, but the rest kept going. Bringing up the rear was Punchinello. After all, he'd only been a good Wemmick for a short time. He wasn't used to carrying so much. But as he couldn't see, he didn't know that he had left the trail. Suddenly he was alone. I'm ahead of the others, he thought. I'll be the highest with the most. There they are, climbing the hill. At about the same time, Punchinello's foot got caught. It caught the edge of the porch step. He tried to keep his balance. His toys swayed to the right and then to the left. He leaned back, then forward, and tumbled right through the door of Eli's workshop. When Punchinello realised where he was, he was embarrassed. For a long time he stayed face down on the floor. One of the balls rolled across the floor to Eli's workbench. 
the woodcarver turned around. Punchinello? Eli's voice was calm and kind. The Wemmick could feel his face turn red. Looks like you've been carrying a big load. Punchinello rose to his knees, his head low. These are my boxes and balls, he said quietly. Do you play with the boxes and balls? asked Eli. Punchino shook his head. Do you like boxes and balls? I like the way they make me feel. And how do they make you feel? Important! Punchinello answered, still with a small voice. Hmm, observed Eli. So you've been thinking like other Wemmicks, that the more you have, the better you are, and the happier you'll be. I suppose so. Come here, Punchinello. I want to show you something. Punchinello looked up at Eli for the first time. He was glad that the Wemmick maker wasn't angry. Punchinello followed Eli over to the window. There they are looking at the window. Look at them, Eli said. Punchinello saw the Wemmicks climbing the mountain. They were tumbling, stumbling, fighting each other to get ahead. Do they look happy? Eli asked. Punchinello just shook his head. Do they look important? Not at all, Punchinello said, seeing the mare and his wife. The mare was on the ground and she was stepping on his back. She had a box in her, on her head and he had a ball in his mouth. Did I create Wemmicks? to act that way? asked Eli. No. Punchinello felt a big hand on his shoulder. Do you know how much your boxes and balls have cost you? My books and my bed, my money and my house. My little friend, they cost you much more than that. They cost you your happiness, didn't they? Punchinello paused. Yes. They cost you friends. What's worse, you did not trust me to make you happy. You trusted in toys. Punchinello looked at his toys. Suddenly, they didn't seem so valuable. I kind of mess things up. That's okay. You're still special. Punchinello ducked his head and smiled. You're special not for what you have, but for who you are. You're mine. I love you. Don't forget that. I won't, Punchinello smiled. Eli? Yes? What should I do with all these boxes and balls? Perhaps you should give them to someone who really needs them. Punchinello turned to leave, but stopped. Eli? Yes? I don't have a place to sleep. Eli smiled and offered. Would you like to sleep here tonight? I certainly would. I'm very tired. And so that night, Punchinello slept on a bed of straw. He slept well. It felt good to be in the house of his maker.